Breaking Myths is bringing attention to the harmful and destructive behaviors and policies of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro as he's up for re-election. Can you talk to me about your inspiration for the film? Yes, I believe uh, privilege comes with responsibility. So after I, I received some threats, I decided to, to make my uh, uh, teenage dream of moving to California come true. But once I arrived here, I felt the wage of like leaving my country, Brazil, behind. And so I decided to use the privilege, the privilege of like being here in California where LGBTQs are like uh, protected uh, to talk about, uh, uh, to reflect and look back to what's going on in Brazil. Well, Bolsonaro is known as sort of the Brazilian Donald Trump, but for those who aren't entirely aware, can you discuss some of the harmful policies and the ways in which he's affecting LGBTQ plus people? Uh, yes, uh, Bolsonaro, uh, he, he produces a rhetoric. Uh, he says the, the most awful things that like if he had a, a, a LGBTQ son, he would beat him up. Uh, uh, like it's so many quotes that he is disrespectful to uh, to women, like that he has uh, four kids, three are men, and the four one he he became weak and had a girl, uh, and even like stupid, silly things. Like today, a uh, few days ago, it was Independence Day in Brazil, and for a huge crowd, he started shouting that he was not important. Believe it or not, you know. So this uh, kind of rhetoric uh, might look uh, 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 just, uh, for some people, uh, not harmful, but it, but it also give a sign for people to, to, to behave like uh, a wild uh, uh, animals. So for instance, recently uh, one person was killed in Brazil because uh, uh, because uh, uh, he was like doing a birthday party for the left-wing uh, candidate, you know? So suddenly people look to the president and see this kind of behaviors and start believing that it's okay uh, to lose the basic civil principles of, uh, of uh, respecting other, uh, other people. Bolsonaro's minister of, uh, uh, of he has a, a minister called Damaris who start uh, shouting that boys should wear blue and girls should wear pink. So. It's in all the way he is like uh, uh, brainwashing the population, uh, going against all the basic civil principles of respect to LGBTQ people or to fight racism or to respect women. So this creates a, a kind of a feeling uh, that uh, people should not respect what's different anymore. And, and this produces a, a, a chaos and it looks like uh, society is like moving backwards. And of course, what I'm saying looks very familiar to US when uh, you, you guys used to have uh, Donald Trump uh, as a, a president, uh, which for us in Brazil was pretty sad because everybody in the world looks US as a moral compass, you know, and using President Biden's word when a clown like uh, Donald Trump was a president, somehow the big reference of US erodes for, for everyone, so. Well, you explore toxic masculinity a lot. You even say masculinity can kill. Can you just dive a little bit deeper into that? Sure, I think like uh, everybody's kind of aware of the, the term toxic masculinity, which was like, when men are, 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 are disrespectful, for instance, with women like men corrupting uh, or gaslighting. So we are proposing a concept which are, we are calling catastrophic masculinity, which is when a man can harm not only an individual or a family, but like a whole community, a whole country, a, a, a whole continent, or even the planet. So for instance, when you look like men like Donald Trump and, and Bolsonaro, which by the way, both get along really well, uh, you see that they are denying science uh, and uh, producing policies that makes uh, go against every environmental protection. So if you look to, 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 the, to the North Pole, you can see the, the, uh, the plant, the ice melting, the ocean levels rising, 
you see uh, here in California, uh, uh, wildfires getting bigger and bigger all the time. Uh, so these are policies that are not uh, uh, anchored on science. They are anchored on, on, on false beliefs that are profit for some, some uh, uh, companies at the expense of the whole, uh, the whole country. So what we're saying with catastrophic masculinity is like some men not only harm their, their individual around them, but the whole planet. And that's what we think. We're trying to call attention to this problem so we can debate new ways uh, uh, to, for society to organize itself. Right, and calling attention to this, what would a second win mean? if Bolsonaro were to win a second time, I know the film is kind of talking about the impact, the devastating impact that could have. What do you personally think that would mean? Um, the, the, Amazon, uh, the Amazon forest uh, is a, a, a very big, this is the largest forest in the, in the whole world. It's a big stock of carbon, of biodiversity, of uh, uh, drinkable water. And the Amazon has a lot of protections uh, uh, on the law. Uh, one by one, Bolsonaro and his mob are removing the protections uh, so uh, companies can do mining, uh, destroy the forest to, to produce soy, to, produce, uh, uh, to, to breed cattle, and these kind of things. So uh, having a second term of Bolsonaro means reducing the protections on the, uh, on the Amazon, uh, which can create a, create a devastation that not only uh, kills uh, uh, communities of indigenous people that from hundreds of years are already being attacked, uh, but also produce a harm that can uh, affect the whole world in terms of environment. So this is just like one piece of the big harm that this uh, man can do. Well, stepping aside a little bit and going off of the harm that he's doing within the LGBTQ plus community, could you just briefly take me through why in 2017 you personally decided to come out? And um, I know that there was a lot of backlash from that. So can you kind of take me through that? Yes, sorry, I was drinking some water, and also I must say I'm not a native speaker, so my English is a little broken. I'm sorry. So when I uh, when I uh, I did a documentary about the, uh, the decriminalization of drugs, which I interviewed several uh, uh, chief of states, including including President Bill Clinton and President Carter. After that, I received some like uh, public recognition uh, as a filmmaker. My film became a, a social, one of the social, uh, human rights social networks with 21 million followers in Brazil. So one day I decided to make a, a, a YouTube video coming out of the closet. Because of that, I got invited to do interviews in primetime television in Brazil and writing newspapers. Because I am a gay man, uh, I was very worried about the race of Bolsonaro to the, to, to the to the to, to, to raise to power and his um, how can I say pres presidential run, so I became very vocal about it. Uh, at that time, just like Donald Trump, people don't believe the the menace of uh, Bolsonaro was real. He was just like a clown, someone that nobody took him serious. But I I was worried, uh, so I decided to speak. And as I speak, I receive a lot of threats. Uh, messages saying that I should be beaten up on the street to learn how to be a man, message saying that my funeral would have a closet coffin, so I should keep my mouth shut. And uh, that's when I decided to, to, to move to US because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. Was there ever any fear in choosing to come out knowing uh, you know, obviously, Bolsonaro has these very ex this very extreme fan base, and also you've been raised in you know a sort of machismo setting. So, was there any fear in doing so? I came out uh, uh, when I was uh, around twenty one, but I was the kind of uh, gay man that was like not very vocal. I was like discreetly gay, you know. When I start. Uh, dating my, my husband, uh, Fernando, who directs the film with me, 
uh, he comes from a different generation. Uh, uh, he, for instance, is a, a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, he likes Lady Gaga. So because I raised with like television and he raised with social network with pop divas, he, he got infused on a culture that he didn't have the uh, uh, guilt to be gay. Uh, homophobia was not big on him that it wasn't me. And inspired, uh, inspired by him, uh, we, I started like, to change my behavior. I thought about doing this YouTube channel, so then he encouraged me. And, uh, and that's when I realized that I, was, I need to take a step from being just out of, on, on my family to being proud uh, and using the privileges I have as a, a middle-class uh, white man to produce social change. So there is this difference between just gay, being gay, and being like proudly out as gay. Right, and I feel like you are kind of taking that pride to the next level with this film because you're weaving in your own story with, uh, you know, talking about the information of how Bolsonaro is so destructive. What was that choice and why did you decide to do that? Why did you decide to make it personal? Um, to be honest, like I, I, I didn't consciously decide when you do a documentary, sometimes become a beast on its own and start dragging me. Uh, but what I felt is that like, I need to be honest with viewers in the sense of like where I'm coming from. So like, I thought it was important to say that like, I am a Brazilian middle, uh, middle-class white uh, uh, a gay man who experienced sorts of uh, uh, abuse in my life, so people understand where I come, where I'm coming from. Because sometimes it kind of annoys me when I watch a documentary and you see that that voice that we call the voice of God, that is like very low pitch, uh, uh, masculine, saying stuff like it was like actual truth. You know, I think sometimes it could be seen as a little dishonest. So I want to be clear with my, uh, my audience, like, this is me. That's where I came from. So you know my blind spots, and you know where I can look deeper, you know? So for instance, I took a big effort on the film to talk about women's issues, uh, Black people's issues, Indigenous people's issues, but that's not my place of speech. My place of speech is, like, supporting those causes. So I want to be honest with, with the audience so they know where it's easier for me to, to see and where are my bl blind spots. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, too, because in doing that, you're kind of breaking down that wall between the viewer and the subject matter. So that makes a lot of sense. Going into creating the film itself, um, what types of risks were, um, was, what types of risks did your team have to undergo in terms of telling this story? All sorts of risks. So for instance, the co-director, Claudia Calabi, she went to deep inside the Amazon on very dangerous places. Like, uh, for instance, a couple of months later, um, uh, the British journalist, uh, um, a Br British journalist uh, was killed together with, Don Phillips was killed together with Bruno Pereira. Uh, so it's, that's exactly the, the thing I was talking in the beginning of the interview. Once the president st uh, stops sending a sign for society that is not okay to behave like a criminal, this sort of disorganized society. So when you go to remote places like the Amazon, they they believe it's so. Some people believe it's okay to 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 kill, to to harass, to abuse because they see they, they don't see that the moral compass of the president is pointing in the right direction. So this is one sort of, 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 of uh, how can I say, dangers that my crew uh, uh, faced. We also interview a militia uh, member in Rio de Janeiro, which is very delicate, uh, especially because uh, uh, most of the militia members we got in touch are supporting Bolsonaro because Bolsonaro supports the militia, just like he told to, to, to talk to BBC on an interview. So uh, it was dangerous to talk with, with these people because usually militia are, are formed by former army members or policemen. So like uh, they are, uh, how can I say, you don't have anyone to go to if things go wrong, you know? Uh, also like 
uh, vast uh, wave of journalists in Brazil have been threatened and harassed since Bolsonaro came into, po into power uh, or like begin to race to power. A few days ago, Vera Magalhães, which is a great journalist, was uh, uh, need to need to be. Uh, sh she was like almost attacked by a congressman that supports Bolsonaro. So the the environment is of threats everywhere, uh, of like scary, scary, scary. So thanks, uh, we had a very brave team who decided to run risks uh, in in uh, for the benefit of like sending the message and, and telling the truth. And that's the point of why we are making this film uh, also in English, because I, I think it's important for uh, America and uh, all over the world to know what's going on in Brazil, to know what's going on with the Amazon, and also to somehow look at this as a, some sort of mirror, because many of the things that are happening in Brazil uh, are uh, mirrors what happened in the US. Steve Bannon, who just got uh, arrested recently, uh, was close to the Bolsonaro family. There are pictures all over uh, the, the internet. The, the, the technology of fake news that uh, 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 happened in, in Brazil uh, mimic the technology of fake news that happened in the US. So if the US wants to be the moral compass of the, of the world and, uh, and becomes a leader, this comes with responsibility. So it's important to, to look at the damage that it's produced uh, uh, overseas, so U.S. can fix the, the domestic problems as well. Well, thank you so much. I think that that's a perfect way to end on this, unless there's anything else that you would like to add that I haven't covered. No, just sorry about my dog, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much. Where can viewers go to watch the film once it's out? Uh, the viewers can go to YouTube, to see, uh, to see Breaking Myths or to our website, which is www.breakingmyths.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.